Settings, settings, settings. In OBS, having your settings right will make or break your live streams and recordings. Viewers don't want to watch content that looks as blurry as a hundred year old person's eyesight or even videos that are so choppy it's like you're watching a still picture slideshow. Which is why today I'm going to be showing you the best OBS streaming and recording settings whether or not you're on a Windows computer, an Intel Mac or an M1 M2 chip silicon based Mac. The settings I'm about to show you can be applied across all of these devices. Let's go. Now I'm going to show you guys two different ways that you can configure your OBS settings. The first way is going to be the easy, simple method. And what you guys are going to want to do here is go into your OBS, go to the left hand side where it says profile, select that, and we're going to create a brand new profile. I'm going to go ahead and name this best encoder settings. Make sure that you have checked off show auto configuration wizard, then go ahead and select OK. From here, you're gonna get a window that'll pop up for what you're gonna be using this profile for. Are you gonna be mainly using it for live streaming or are you gonna be using it for recording? I'm gonna go ahead and keep it for streaming. Select next. Here, you're gonna choose what you want your resolution to be. So I wanna go with 1920 by 1080 and I like having a 60 FPS stream. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and select next again. On this screen, you wanna put in your stream information, whether that's by using the custom option or by logging into the services that are available here with Within the drop down. With that information in, keep the two check boxes below that checked off, and then go ahead and select next. And from there, your computer is going to run a bandwidth test to see how good your internet is versus your computer to see what your best settings will be. My test results are in. It took about 30 seconds to complete, and based on my computer specifications, streaming to YouTube, I'm good to stream at a 10,000 bit rate using my dedicated NVIDIA graphics card. That is the hardware encoder that I'll be using for live streaming and recording. And now at this point, we can just go ahead and select apply settings and that will apply directly to our OBS profile so that when we stream and record, we'll have the best settings configured now without us having to do anything else to go live or do recordings. For the second method I have to show you for setting up even better settings, in my opinion, is if you go to your settings and then first head over to video and then make sure that your base canvas and your output canvas are set to where you want them to be. So if you want to do a 1080p stream or recording, you're going to want to make sure that you have both of these resolutions set to 1920 by 1080 like you see for my settings. If for example you're trying to do a 4k resolution recording or live stream then you're going to want to change your base canvas resolution to 3840 by 2160 and do the same for the output scaled resolution as well. Now let's say that your base canvas is 1920 by 1080 but you're going to have your output canvas be 720p. In that case you're going to need to set a downscale filter for the best quality you're going to want to set that to 30 six samples, but if your base canvas and output canvas are both 1080p, then you won't need to set a downscale filter at all. Just don't forget to set your FPS value, which a lot of people like to set it at 60. Next, we're going to head over to the output tab, and this is where you're going to see the settings that we set up earlier in the video when we first set up this profile. If you go to the top, you're going to see that our output mode is simple, but we're going to want to select that drop down and head over to advance. And the first thing that we'll be presented with is our streaming settings. For the audio track, you can keep that at one. For the audio encoder, you can keep this at default. It'll most likely say FFmpeg AAC, or for Mac users, it'll say Core Audio AAC. Core Audio compresses the audio a little bit better than FFmpeg, but you'll be good with either one of those. Under that, you have the video encoder, and this is the most important part of the entire process of setting up your live stream and recording settings. So for Windows, you're gonna get a bunch of options, but let me tell you the most important ones that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. On your computer, if you know you only have a CPU with integrated graphics within that CPU, then you're gonna wanna go with the X264 encoder option because that's an encoding feature that a lot of streaming platforms like to ingest, such as Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Kick. You'll be good using that if you do not have a dedicated graphics card. If you do have a dedicated graphics card, on the other hand, then you can go with the NVEC H.264 option. So whether or not that's for your NVIDIA card or for your AMD card, you're going to want to go with the H.264 encoding format. For those of you guys using M1, M2 silicon chip based machines, you're good to go with the Apple VT hardware encoder. Even with OBS having official silicon support now, the hardware encoder still shines above the others in terms of efficiency and performance. With your video encoder selected now, below that, there is no need to rescale the output. If we go to the encoder settings, 
The first thing that we're gonna see is the rate control. Now, across Mac computers and Windows, CBR is going to be an option that wasn't in the past for at least the Mac Silicon computers, but CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, is the best option that you're gonna wanna go with here. Next up, you have your bitrate, and this is the second most important thing that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Before we set this for live streaming, we're gonna wanna know our internet upload speed. So we can go to Google, type in speed test, then run the speed test, and this is gonna give us some insight to how fast our internet is. The speed that we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is the upload speed. I'm clocking in about a 23 megabit per second upload speed, so if we compare that number to this bitrate stream guidelines chart that I put together, we can see that I can stream up to a 2K 60 FPS quality pretty freely. So if you're gonna be streaming in an 8,000 kilobit per second bitrate, that means you need to at least have a 10 megabit per second upload speed. That way you have a little bit of buffer between your 8 meg and 10 meg upload speed so that if your bitrate fluctuates, you'll be okay and your stream won't go down. After you set your bitrate, you can set your keyframe interval to two. Preset, if you're using a dedicated graphics card, I would stick to P5, which is good quality. If you have a really good graphics card, you can experiment with the slower or the slowest quality. If you're on X264, Keep that at very fast for your encoding preset. Once you start taking it down to faster or fast, unless your CPU is an absolute beast, it's gonna struggle trying to encode in those speeds. You're gonna get the encoding overload error, so just stick with very fast in this case. For your tune, you can keep that at high quality. Multi-pass mode is good at two passes. Profile, this is usually good to keep at high or main. High will give you better quality when it comes to compression. Do not check off, look ahead, and then keep psycho visual tuning turn Turned on. People who have more than one graphics card in their settings can either keep this at zero or modify it to one. For your max B frames, you want to keep this at two. Now, if we jump over to the recording tab, this is where we can set our recording path for where we want our videos to be saved on our computer. Below that, you're going to have your recording format, which by default, it'll be an MKV which is great if you don't want to potentially lose footage that you were recording in case OBS crashes, but there is a lot of compatibility issues with using MKV. So my recommendation usually to most people is to either use an MP4 file or .mov. For your video encoder, pretty much the same thing that we covered in the streaming section. If you're on an M1, M2 chip based Mac and you have your recording format set to a MOV, then I highly recommend taking advantage of the Apple VT Pro Res hardware encoder to get better looking footage. For this setup on the Windows computer, since I do have the dedicated graphics card, I'm gonna go ahead with the NVIDIA H.264 hardware encoder option. And yes, I did test to confirm that you can stream and record off the same graphics card at the same time and you won't get performance issues even if you set your bitrate pretty high. For doing a 1080p 60 FPS recording, you can feel comfortable setting this bitrate up to over 20,000. That obviously will not apply to all computers, so if you are having issues, continue to decrease your bitrate by intervals of 500 until your issue is gone. All the other settings below this, you can keep those exactly the same as what we applied on the stream setting side, and you'll be good to go. Hopefully all those settings will help you guys out and can be used as a baseline to at least get you started for how you need to configure your settings and it will need to be adjusted depending on your exact build. In the description below, I did put some details in about the encoders so that you guys can learn a little bit more about them instead of me kind of going in the weeds in this video about it. Also, check out this video here if you wanna learn how to multi-stream completely for free within OBS. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank y'all for watching, peace.